Hey guys, Sandy Chase, Potpourri House, and I'm going to do a tutorial video today to talk about how I build bows that we have in our trees. This poor tree is so empty because every time I've built a bow for it, it's sold, the entire bow creation is sold off of it. So I've had a few people ask me how we do this, so I'm going to show you how I do it. Now I'm going to put a disclaimer here, I'm not a florist individual or a floral individual, so I do have a way that I construct a bow that is different from a lot of people. Um, I've self-taught myself this. Feel free to use it however you want. But without further ado, let's get into it. What we're doing today is I'm constructing a bow topper for a tree that is 12 foot in height. So what I did first was I cut what I call the legs, and you'll see how these come together. For, to go down the sides of the tree. So what I do normally with a tree is I add two foot to the tree. So if, like if I was doing it for this tree, instead of doing the, the legs at seven and a half, um, I do them at nine and a half. On this one, instead of doing it at 12, which is the height of the tree, I did it at 14. That way they can go ahead and tuck them in coming down the tree. It makes a really pretty presentation, but we can get to that in a minute. So if you look on my table, you can see that what I've got here is I have cut different lengths of ribbons and I've alternated the ribbon pattern. So what I did is, again, based on the height of the tree, you cut your ribbons at specific lengths. So what I did here is this is a 22 inch ribbon length. This is a 20, this is 18, this is 16, here is 14, and here is 12. But I wanted to demonstrate how I did that so I get my ribbon. I always go a little bit in here because you need to have something to hook in the center. So I have about that much. Then I take this and I've got my measuring tape out. So I go from one to 22. So that's 22 inches. Then I fold it in half where my fingers meet. So again, remember we're gonna have that little section there because I want it to be able to be caught in the center of the bow. So I take this finger, put it at the end, and take it to 22 inches here, and I bring them and I meet. So at that point, I don't measure anymore because I know these are the lengths I want. I always work in odds. So if I do, I either do three loops, five loops, seven loops. Since this is a bigger tree, I'm gonna do it with more loops. So that's two loops, one and one. Once I come around this way, that makes two on this end, one on this one. So I come around again, so now I have two and two on either side. I'll straighten that out a little bit, make sure it's nooked in there. Keep everything aligned. Usually by that point, I'll lay things down because I can keep it nice and flat. So. So now I have three on one end and two on this end. I wrap it one more time, that's four on each side and then I wrap it one more time, and that makes one, two, three, four on this side, and three on this side. Again, that's the odd, you know, three, five, seven, nine. Keep in odds, you never wanna do things in evens. And then you'll notice here that these guys, I've nooked them, you know, I've center cut them out a little bit. I'll turn this one the right way. I've center cut them out a little bit because that's gonna allow everything to twist and open up in the bow. So to do that, I take this, I just turn it in half like this, match them up, and then I get my scissors, and I'm just telling you, use a, a, good, a good pair of fabric scissors. I mean, they cost a little bit more, but if you keep them for fabric scissors and not do any paper or anything like that, they'll keep a nice edge for you. So then I just come in and I just cut these corners off. Again, guys, this is how I self-taught to make my bows. It's not um, what maybe a, a florist or somebody or would, would do, but this is how I do it. So see, I've got that little end, that's gonna catch that, that, that loop. So then I've got my, my links cut, 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12. Now, I will be honest, on my 14s and my 12s, instead of doing seven, I've only done five loops, three on one side, two on another, because I don't want it to be so thick in the middle that it doesn't um, open up nicely. Now, my other cheat that I do is I use zip ties, because you want to get that center really tight. 
So a zip tie, I find, is a nice way to be able to make it super tight and get it down. So to construct this ribbon, you take the 22 on the back, you put the 20, you put the 18, you stack the 16, you stack the 14, and you stack the 12, okay? So we've got them all stacked in graduating lengths. Then you grab a set of legs, And these are really long guys because they're 14. Not necessarily the easiest way uh, to do this. But what I did is this gives me two legs for one side. Kick it out here. <laughs> it's a lot of ribbon. Two legs for one side and two legs for another side. Now one of the things I've noticed that when you're doing ribbon, especially ribbon um, with print on it, it, like, you know, you've got Merry Christmas on this one, make sure everything um, faces the correct way. Now one thing I'm gonna tell you is normally on a, a tree less than nine feet, you don't have to join your ribbons. A lot of your normal uh, ribbon bolts are only gonna be 10 yards, that's 30 feet. Now this is 14 feet on one side 14 feet on another side so what i did is i actually just did 14 this way and 14 that way instead of trying to do 28 but that's easy enough because your your zip tie is going to take up a lot of that so i've got these ribbons joined in the middle and again this is just a, a construction thing guys for me i just see it as a way to construct so i i have this facing up this way and then I take this entire stack and that becomes the center of my bow. And I have to make sure everything, all those little V's are kind of lined up. It's gonna make it easier to connect. Then I take my zip tie and I just put it at the back and in the center of what the V's would have been. Oh, I've got it upside down, sorry. So then, oh no, maybe I was right. <laughs> sorry about that. So then you tighten it down a little bit. But what I wanna do is I wanna put this on the back. So I turn everything upside down. I put my hand in the middle and I literally get it as tight as I can because the reason we cut those V's is it's gonna make those loops real easily, easy to pull out. And you can see I've got it as tight as I can get it. Then I'm gonna take my wire cutters because I just don't want that sticking me. And I'm gonna cut off that leftover so that's done. And then I take a, um, I like to join and put my bows and things in the tree with pipe cleaners. I feel like that's a little easier on the hands when I do it. So I'll take two pipe cleaners, because this is a really tall tree, it's gonna be bigger than normal. And I'm gonna twist them together to marry them into one long pipe cleaner. And I just lay it to the side like that and just wrap it a little bit. So it's nice and strong. So then I come around the back and basically I'm covering that zip tie because this pipe cleaner would not have been strong enough to do that and hold it nice and tight. So there's how we're gonna join it to the tree. So then we flip over back to the top. And what you do is you work down in layers. The one thing that I learned in doing this is you open this, these loops up so you can see how I've opened up and there's uh, one loop, two loops, three loops. And you pull from the inside out. So you get the interior loop in your hand, and then like this, and you take it and twist it. So that pops it nice enough. Now it looks a little weak right now, but as the layers build up, it's gonna push these all up. Then you take the other interior piece and you twist it that opposite direction. So this is one side of our bow and you come over to the other side. Some people like to work it down one side. Um, I just like to see my layers come, come apart, so that's how I do it. And I come in and you just twist them opposite of each other. Because what that's doing right here is it's taking that little V that we cut and kind of separating them at the bottom, allowing them to pop up really nicely. Okay, so we have that odd, odd numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Then we're gonna come here and we're gonna take this one, the interior, we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna twist it. So then you're gonna get that nice bow there. 
and then we're going to do like this. So that's that side. Then we're going to come over here and repeat the same action. We're going to take it and we're going to twist just like this. So you can see how the bow is now starting to see how all these pop up really nicely. And you don't have to really pay attention to a lot of placement at this point because you know you're going to be number one building this bow and then number two putting it in the tree. Once you get it in the tree that's when you're going to make all your loops look really nice and in place. So we just go down and do the same thing on the next layer. I just have to find the center. There it is. Grab the first one on the interior. Push that up a little bit so you guys can see. We're going to take this and we're going to twist it. Then you're going to take the next interior piece and pull it over and twist it. And then you separate these two guys and twist them. So again, it's starting to build up in body because you've got all this layering of fabric going on. Then we're gonna come over to the other side and we're gonna repeat the process for the next layer down. So open up all your layers and you take the first one on the inside and twist it out. I know that's kind of hard to see, but you twist it out. Then you're gonna come over and you're gonna get your hand in the other two and you're gonna twist them out. So again, everything's starting to layer up. And this is really easy, guys. And the great thing is, mathematically, you're just going two inches shorter. So let's say you wanted the diameter of your bow to be 20. You know, you've got 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. And then you just go down by twos, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12. Just kind of like a pyramid. So then we're gonna come down into our next layer and we're gonna get our hands in there. We're gonna get into the interior of all the bows like I am, and we're gonna pull them apart and you're just gonna twist them. And again, I'm not saying that I am uh, the expert here. This is just a self-taught way that I learned how to make bows and it just made sense in my head. So many people are intimidated about making bows. I was intimidated about making bows, but once I did this and practiced a little bit and really let my head go around the fact that it's just layering, constructing, measuring, I could really get, I could really get a handle on it. So we're gonna go in here, see how I've got my hand in the center. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna grab that center piece, that's that center loop. We're gonna twist it opposite away from the other ones. Then we're gonna come in, grab the other one on the inside and twist it. So see, we're starting to get, sometimes you have to kind of manhandle them. If you got your, got your, um, zip tie in there, it's not gonna get loose. Okay, so now we're gonna come over back over to the other side and we're gonna work on the, um, the last layer before the biggest layer. We're just gonna separate them and twist them. And I always work with wired ribbon, guys. I, your ribbon has to have a good body. If it doesn't have a good body, it's just gonna wilt. So that's why I always look for um, wired ribbon. And I usually don't work with a, a satin or a, 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 a silk because I just haven't had the ability to get those to pop up. I want my bows to be popping up and, and really big. So then we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna come in and grab the interior bow, twist, grab the interior bow, twist. All right. So that is everything but the last, the last, um, the largest layer, the 22 inch layer. So you can see we've got our all of our pieces. You're gonna come in, you're gonna grab the interior, the, the most interior loop, pull it and twist it. Then you're gonna come and grab the most interior loop and twist it the opposite direction. And then you're gonna do the same thing again, because I made more loops on this one because I wanted this big, healthy layer of ribbon. Then you come over and again, do the same thing on the other side, get my hands inside. I grab that first interior piece, twist. Then I get again, I grab the interior piece and twist. So now what I have, find my little pieces. Now what I have is this big, gorgeous, bow with all these layers of ribbon in them and then I just affix it 
to the tree like that. Then I'll take these, once I, I usually would affix it right up here. Then I take these and I just tuck them in. On this one I do three tucks. On a 12 foot I think they're gonna have to do about five tucks. But if I want to marry, what I do is I make two of these. One for the front, one for the back. And then literally I tie, I go this is the tree, I tie the front around this way. And then I take the next bow and tie it this way. And then I arrange the loops to where it looks like one big continuous bow. That's how I do it. And I'm, again, disclaimer, not a florist, not a professional decorator, but I don't do bad, let's put it that way. So if you have any further questions, um, always shoot us uh, an email. You can find us, uh, you can actually find me on our website at potpourrihouse.com. And don't be intimidated. This is nothing but a bunch of wire and fabric, and you are a human being with creativity in you. Take authority over this, make your bows, practice, and just have a good time. Thanks for spending time with me. I'll see you soon.